Julie, do the thing! Wait, wrong game. And that's not a game, so what am I talking about? But this is the Mississippi King welcoming you all back to more Let's Play Mega Man 4. So how's it going, Mississippi Dukes? And in the last episode, we finished off the last of Cossack's castle, only to find out that it's a trap by Dr. Wily, that is. Yeah, that's funny, I, like, I keep up with the Star Wars theme naming, but I haven't really made many, or any Star Wars references for that matter. So that's weird. Maybe I should fix that. Nevertheless, Dr. Cossack was actually innocent. He was forced to commit to these horrible acts by Dr. Wily. So now we need to stop the real mastermind, Dr. Wily. And so we're tackling the first stage of the Wily Castle. So this is the finale of Let's Play Mega Man 4. This stage is actually pretty good. It's it's loaded with metals for for some reason they they just keep showing up. It's like a metal city. Well, this stage is uh, pretty good. Also, one thing I feel I should have mentioned earlier is that apparently Proto Man is known in Japan as uh, Blues. Because, of course, there aren't enough music references in the Mega Man series. But yeah, that's what it's called. That, that will explain the subtitle for the next Mega Man game in Japan. We'll get to that when we get to that, but... This stage has a neat uh, underwater section. I like to use Rush Marine for that. You'll want to keep an eye out for the weapon energy because... Uh, well, of course, you'll need it for coming ahead, like... The boss rush does return. Y'all thought that it, there was no boss rush since Cossack was presumably the final boss. He was not. Speaking of the boss, we're act or bosses that is, we're actually coming up on the boss of this uh, Wily stage, and it's actually pretty easy. And contrary to what the the info card says, I mean. If the info card is true, the weakness is in fact the Dust Crusher, but I don't- that's not the weapon that I prefer to use against it. I prefer to use the Ring Boomerang, because it allows me to get in a number of quick hits, and it, it can also take care of the two metals that it spawns when it lands on the ground. Like, two it spawn and two, well, four, actually, and two go left, two go right. So the Ring Boomerang actually goes through them, and it works pretty well against uh, that boss for this reason, and it's also really fast. The boss, by the way, is called the Metal Daddy, as the info card will no doubt say. And uh, the thing with uh, the weapons is that they are all awesome. I disagree with anyone who says otherwise, and I will fight you if you say otherwise. Anybody want to tell me that the weapons in Mega Man 4 are lousy? Because I'll come at you. I will fight you. But, yeah, even the screen nuke in this game is really good, and I don't normally care that much for screen nukes, but in this game, it actually helps a, a decent bit. It's certainly a lot better than the one in Mega Man 5, because, uh, well, in that, it only does, like, one point of damage, so it's not very good. And, uh, it's... it's really only good for taking out small enemies in Mega Man 5, but in this game, it does some pretty decent damage. And this stage, by the way, marks the final appearance of Eddie in the Mega Man 
in Mega Man 4, that is. Uh, so, uh, we're gonna have to say goodbye to that useless curse. I mean, that's exactly what it is. Why are you looking at me like that, Internet? He is a purse. For some reason, Dr. White thought it would be a good idea to invent a purse. And that's how we got Eddie. Also, something that uh, I feel I should mention is the brightness. Some of y'all may have noticed that the brightness is actually, like, brighter than it was before. And that's because, like, the brightness that I currently see, that, like, what I'm doing while I'm playing the, through the game is different from what uh, it will actually look like in the final video. This is to make it look uh, more clear, because I'm kind of, I was kind of concerned that uh, the darkness it has... Well, it was a suggestion that someone gave me in the comments of the previous video. So thanks for that, by the way. But let me know if uh, that uh, if this fixes the problem, if increasing the brightness makes the, the video quality look better. I want to know because it, it does seem to improve it for me, but I'd like to hear from y'all to see whether or not it's, it's doing any... it's doing its job. Because it uh, wants the videos to look the best that they can. The coming boss, by the way, is also ridiculously easy, and it's weak to the ring boomerang. So, I used it on two bosses in a row. It's, uh, it's actually very effective, because of it has a decent hitbox, and it's pretty fast. But, yeah, it's a boss in Smiley Stage 2 is a piece of cake. It's weak to the ring boom ring, and that's the one that, that, that's the weapon that I prefer to use against it. It's pretty effective, too. Again, I will fight anyone who says that the weapons in Mega Man 4 are bad. So, this boss, you just sort of use the platforms to get up to it, and then time your shots really well, so that you can get in some good hits. But other than that, it's pretty easy. Also, watch out for the fire and the things that it shoots from the top of its head. But now that uh, we can, we'll actually take this guy out, and the next stage is actually the one with the boss rush. So uh, get ready for a speed montage. But when we get to this stage, then we will quickly find a number of things that they just straight up give us. And it's like, look at this crap, I don't need any of it! Yeah, but I will take the weapon energy, though. Yeah, so I, I don't need anything else, though. I am quite alright with that. Yeah, this stage is pretty short, pretty easy, and the music that I'm using is uh, actually the Metal Gear Saga from Metal Gear Solid 4, and yes, I realize it appeared in Metal Gear Solid 3 first, but this is the... well, I mean, the version of it is from Metal Gear Solid 4. I mean, it's Mega Man 4, of course I'm, I'm gonna use that. And also, just like Mega Man 4, it was... Metal Gear Solid 4 was the last uh, well-told story of uh, the Metal Gear series. Beyond that, the storytelling ability just of Kojima just went downhill really fast. Peace Walker and Metal Gear Solid 5 aren't bad games, but their storytelling is terrible. I guess that's where the similarities in, because this isn't a story-based game. But nevertheless, it's still where the series kind of it was like the last truly great game in the series. Also, I'm actually going to be marking the song on the screen.
I mean, the story of the Peace Walker itself is really good. Not so much for um, Metal Gear Solid 5. Although I do admit that the cinematography in Metal Gear Solid 5 is pretty impressive, but besides that, the story is both convoluted and unfulfilling. But this here is actually Wily Machine 4, and you fight it by standing right next to it, right here. And it will never hit you if you keep up this pattern. Just, like, keep jumping after it shoots the third one, and you won't get hit. It's pathetic. But now, you'll actually want- you'll actually have to do a decent bit of dodging. Now, you remember when I said that the drill bomb can actually be detonated mid-air? Well, this is actually where it is relevant, because you're supposed the drill bomb is the weakness of uh, the second phase of uh, Wily Machine 4, so you use that and keep detonating it just before it hits, and you should be good, and you keep doing that and it'll go down pretty easily. Also, the final boss, which is coming up, is actually weak to the Pharaoh shot. However, um, unlike before, when you die, you're actually sent back to the earlier part, so... And I don't think the Mega Buster actually does any damage on it, but nevertheless, that doesn't really matter, because now, you can actually grind for weapon energy in case you run out. But this final boss is pretty easy if you just hop around with the Pharaoh shot and it should be a piece of cake. Another thing that Mega Man 4 standardized is that the final boss now actually has a final boss theme. Like, separate from the regular boss theme. And it's actually pretty good. It's one of my... I think it's one of the better tracks in this game. I mean, it, as I've said, it's not my favorite or second favorite, but it's still up there, maybe even in my top five. And actually, the the boss, you can sort of see where he is and sort of feel around by trying to sort of, like, play it by instinct. You can get, get a feel for where he may show up next. But yeah, it is kind of just a bit of luck base. So you'll want to watch out for the, them electric uh, balls because they can do a lot of damage. Like, they can shave off your health pretty decently, but they're pretty easy to dodge. They, you just shoot one at a time, so you can pretty much just get away from it, and uh, it's pretty easy to dodge. It doesn't change direction or whatnot. I mean, I say that, and I die to the boss! That is embarrassing. Let's actually try and get this through. I am not using an E-Tank. I'm gonna prove to y'all that I can beat this game without using an energy tank. It's easy. All it takes is just a bit of patience. And if Dr. Wily doesn't show up where you expect, then don't like it. Go and don't like risk your life to go and get to him. Nevertheless, he should go down pretty easily. And we've beaten Dr. Wily. And with that, we have completed Mega Man 4. Now let's arrest him this time. He's not getting away this time. Wait, maybe he is. What's this? He's escaped? A and he's fleeing the castle? What? He, he just, like, flies off, and then, well, the castle's gonna explode. And that's it. We don't get to see Dr. Cossack or what happened to that. 
That ending sucked. <laughs> yeah, I, I know I've been praising this game to death, but that is one thing I am not going to praise this game for. The ending is terrible. I mean, it's... It's not the worst ending in the series, but it's also not particularly great, either. And, uh, nevertheless, that's... that's Mega Man 4. Oh, also, in the credits it says that Bamboo was worked on this game somehow because plants are people too, you know! But, yeah, now that, uh, now that we're done, we don't get to see what happened with Dr. Cossack or what he done did or what he has to say about it, we just... Mega Man just returns home without having caught Dr. Wily or anything like that. That ending is pretty underwhelming and it, it is admittedly a stain on an otherwise magnificent game. Again, I don't think it's fair that this game is uh, dismissed. You see how well I did with the Pharaoh shot? Anybody want to tell me that the weapons are useless? Come at me, internet. I want to hear some of y'all try and claim that, because I have a phone to pick. So, yeah, that's all. That's all, folks. It really is it. But one thing I feel I should mention is that the theme that's playing now, that may just be my favorite track in the game, period. Now, I said before that, uh, that it was Bright Man or Cossack Stage 3 and 4, but I said original tracks, not tracks in general, because this track is actually a remix of uh, the theme and that plays in the opening of Mega Man 2 at the title screen, I should say, and also during the credits. And this rendition of that theme may actually be my favorite rendition of it in the entire series. I'm serious. One thing I should also mention is that the wire adapter was not completely useless. I made significant use of it in Cossack Castle. It came in handy quite a bit, and I used the heck out of it. I don't care what anyone says, it was useful. But this tells us about all the Robot Masters, and interestingly enough, the designer of the Dustman would actually contribute another Robot Master to the series. That would be Crystal Man in Mega Man 5. We'll get to him in Mega Man 5, trust me. I have some things to say about that. But he also would later go on to become the author of One Punch Man. I haven't actually read One Punch Man or seen the anime. I, I'm not very familiar with the series, I just thought it would be an interesting thing to note. But with that, we're done with Mega Man 4. Except, not exactly, because there are a few things that I have missed that I didn't really go over. Well, okay, actually, it's just the box art, in case y'all can tell. So, yeah, that means it's time for the thing that y'all have been waiting for. Box art time! But this time I ain't really got much to say. The American box art, which this time is actually the worldwide box art, so it's used also in Europe as well. And it looks decent enough. It's not particularly great, but it's true to the art style, and it does look kind of cool. But for some reason the planets are in the background, I don't know why. That's weird. But the box art is pretty good, I can't say I have any problems with it. 
In the Japanese box sorts, I haven't really talked about them before, but suffice it to say, they've been pretty bland so far. So I imagine that the Japanese box art will be- Wait, what the heck? The Japanese box art actually looks cool this time? Cooler than the American box art? Why is it that the US is constantly screwed out of good box arts? That seems to be a recurring theme. That whenever there's a good box art in the Mega Man series, that it's always not the US box art unless it's worldwide. But, yeah. That's... that's really all I have for the box art. And that's all, folks. So see you all next time. This is the Mississippi King, signing out. And in the next LP, we'll be tackling Mega Man 5, another divisive entry in the series. So see you all then.